All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over a couple different ways to manipulate this mesh. We're gonna bend it, we're gonna warp it, and we're also gonna do a mirror on it so we can create a really sharp 90 degree corner. Uh, it's just a couple different ways to approach setting out modular pieces and having a little bit of fun with it. Now, something to keep in mind here is that um, this mesh needs to generally line up with one another. So you see where these edges are placed. That's very important. If it does a number like this, this could be problematic because um, this section here is actually an end gone and this is a quad, right? So what ends up happening is we'll end up with an error here if I was to bend this. Uh, it would be better to actually um, set a bevel here and then combine this together like so, something like that. Now you're gonna get a different resolution on the bend because you have additional edges here. So you might wanna also kind of subdivide these as well, something like this. Um, and But we're going to create the error first, just so you can see how that works out. All right, now here's the trick. We're going to select the mesh, apply a simple deform modifier. And right now you can see it's already deforming in this manner. Uh, take side note here, the origin point I placed in the very corner here. You can place it in the center, it will still work, but it's going to not be um, as predictable in my opinion. So. Um, but it's set to twist right now. We need to set it to bend. All right, so I'm going to set it to bend and change it to 90 degrees. And instead of using X, you'll see that it's bending on the X axis. We need to rotate it on the Z axis. Now, if you're, for whatever reason, having some weird rotations going on, it's probably because your rotational values here are not set to zero. So press Control A, apply rotation. Uh, it should clear it up for you as long as your mesh is, you know, set up properly where up is up. So Z up, you know. And uh, now that I've done that, you can see it is bending 90 degrees, but here's the trick. Because that mesh did not line up with one another, we are getting some cool intersection and uh, two faces trying to display through one. So that's where that ends up becoming a problem. Now I'm gonna go back into edit mode and fix that. And you'll see here, I can not actually just put this in here. I'm gonna bevel it. I bevel things by width and this should be 1.2 meters. There we go. So I should be able to grab this all by pressing A, hit M, merge by distance. I should get rid of those two now. And this should line up a little bit better. You can see it's also doing it up here at the top because I didn't separate those either. So same deal up here. And this is why that's important. And surprisingly, I got that right on the money almost. And now I can merge by distance and voila, it's doing a little bit better. These pieces aren't doing too bad here. Um, not 100%, but I think it's it's usable. Now it is deforming the shape of the door. So this here, if we take a look at it, uh, we'll turn it back on in edit mode. We'll do end result. Click that little icon, you get this. Um, this edge here is probably not 1.2 meters now. So if I go to this little drop down, I can go to measurement edge length, and you'll see that's actually changed size. And this one uh, appears to be correct still. So your door will be end up becoming the wrong dimensions. Just keep that in mind. This is why it's good to create um, a cutout in the doorway area that has enough play where you can add a trim or a border so you can actually put a, a proper size door in there as a plug. So keep that in mind. Uh, all right, so this has more resolution now and these ones have less. So we're in, in the situation where it looks all right, but it's obviously, I'm not gonna measure these, but something like that would be more appropriate. So you need the resolution, you need the faces to uh, support a bend. It's just the way it is, all right? And um, so that's simple to form in a nutshell. Here's the, the biggest problem with this. If I go to the top view, hold Alt, you'll see we're in top orthographic now. Hold Alt while orbiting and it does that. Um, it starts here at this grid intersection where the pivot point is and it ends over here. It doesn't line up on the grid. Okay, and so to get that to occur, you can't use the simple deform modifier for that. Even if you were to set this at 180 degrees and bend it like so, it's still just not gonna be uh, where you want it. Now this is a problem for modular kits specifically. This may not be a problem when you're doing any other type of um, scenes in Blender because you might not have to work on the grid or whatnot, but uh, for modular kits, it can be problematic. The fix for that is you don't use a simple deform modifier. What we're gonna do is use um, the warp tool in edit mode. So uh, we're gonna make sure this all lines up nice and neat. And actually I'm gonna snap this edge, this vertex here. So if I hold control, I can snap like so. You can see it's deforming. 
it normally it would deform the the faces here i guess it had it on already so uh up here at options correct face attributes you can see we can move up and down and it it doesn't mess up the uv map here so i can press g control and click here and snap no problems um also side note these get in the way so turn them back off all those numbers all right so this is going to work best if you place the origin point right in the center of this line this might actually mess it up a little bit but we're going to try it shift um, and i'm using machine tools so i'm going to do the pivot point to the center here so this looks about right okay so I'm going to do it on that one vertex. So now you do shift S, cursor is selected, go into object mode, set origin, et cetera, et cetera, right? Move your pivot point right there. And uh, so it's in the center. What I'm going to do is center it up in the scene. It just helps keep things organized a little bit. And under view, you'll see that you can actually change your 3D cursor position. Um, if you were to move this on the Y axis, you start moving it by clicking and dragging. Oh, sorry, that's rotation. Let's zero that back out. Go back to items, zero that out. Here's a side note that's also kind of fun. If I was to take, um, I go to view 3D cursor here. If you ever just right click here, you'll see you can pin these. So if I shift click, I can pin it like so. And so when I go back to item now, you'll see that um, we have 3D cursor here and we can move it wherever we need it. So we can actually, you can actually stack up kind of like custom menus almost um, inside of Blender doing that. So. Let's go ahead and move this on location Y. We're going to click and drag, and it free drags right now. But if we were to, I keep moving it by hitting backspace, set it to increment here, snapping to increment. All right. And we were to click and drag and hold control, you'll see that it snaps on the grid. Okay, so we can snap it wherever we need to. We're going to bend it back this way. Uh, where you place this is going to be up to you. Uh, as long as it's on the grid, it should work out just fine, but it may not snap exactly where you want it so maybe i want it uh, to be 0.2 out so i probably should move it to there you have to click and drag and then hold control otherwise it won't work correctly so something like this and you can see we're in rel relation to each other in 3d space how this is working out okay so when you take this into edit mode now you go to the top view now what we're going to use is mesh transform warp. This is view dependent. So top orthographic is very important here. Sometimes it doesn't get it right the first time. It doesn't seem to register that it's like you're in top orthographic. So sometimes you got to kind of move around a little bit and then try it again. So we're going to click warp and you'll see that it warps 360 degrees. It sets up the min and max value by default, which is great, but we can change this to 90 degrees. And you can see we can get a bend going on like so. Now in this case, it looks like it inverted it. Maybe I'm just seeing things, I don't know. But it seems to have worked out pretty well and it looks about right. So if we go to the top view here, these should start and stop at the same points, kind of like that. All right, and now we're pretty good to go. So what we can do is take this whole mesh, go to, um, object mode here press r z type in 45 degrees because half of 90 degrees is 45 okay so now if we go back to the top view here you'll see that they're pretty much aligned almost perfectly here okay we have a 45 degree rotation uh, what i like to do is press Control a and apply the rotation at this point um, i will send my 3d cursor um, to or I'll put my origin point back where i had it originally Okay, in this case, this is all backwards, so I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to press Control M. I'm going to flip it back over this way. So you press Control M and then hold down the middle mouse button, and it's going to let you uh, mirror in different directions. You can see that little line kind of sticking out. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Whoops. And then left click. All right. And so now we're back kind of where we started, except if we were to take this and zero it out, so hit backspace over location, you'll now see that this, in fact, lines up on the grid. One there and one there, okay? And that will work out pretty much perfectly. So you can take this wall now. Um, if you ever get stuck in orthographic mode, by the way, you can just click here and swap between orthographic and perspective or press number pad five. Uh, just keep that in mind. And so now this is pretty much placed perfectly. You can rotate it 90 degrees or negative 90 in this case so rz negative 90 
and I press G, uh, G, Shift, Z, Control, and Snap. And you should have uh, a pretty good little modular system now. And once again, it will deform the doorway. All right, so keep that in mind. You will have to make some manual corrections on that at some point, probably. All right. But this works. So now if you wanted to create like a tower or whatever the case is, you just place that pivot point where you need it, rotate it around a couple times, and you have a pretty good little modular system here. And so now you have a nice little uh, start of a build. All right. Now, we're going to do one more. All right. And so... We just went over simple deform. What the what the problems there are is that it doesn't line up on a grid. Now warp will allow you to do that. It's a little bit more complicated to set up. But um, let's say we just want to do a 90 degree corner. So I'm going to reopen this file because I kind of geeked it all up here. Um, and this is just flat, a 90 degree corner. You don't have to add all the extra pieces to it. But we're going to do a mirror. Okay. And so uh, when you're doing a mirror, you just apply the mirror modifier. You're going to uh, press bisect, right, or bisect and flip, depending on what's going on. And in this case, I just want to rotate it 45 degrees, and so I'm going to use a mirror object. So I'm going to press, uh, sh well, usually place your 3D cursor where you want it first. In this case, I want to mirror on this side, so I'm going to press Shift S, um, and then put uh, cursor to vertex here and using machine tools hold alt while you do this so it doesn't adopt the rotational value but uh, default blender shouldn't do that so and now we can actually go back into object mode press shift a we're going to create an empty plane axis i'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it but you can see here the plane axis empty that's going to be our our mirror object so we can go over here click mirror object click Ta -da. We can turn flip off probably, and it's going to do this number. Perfect. Okay. Now we can rotate this empty 90 degrees in either direction if we wanted. We're going to do RZ negative 90. Oops. RZ negative 45. Sorry, not 90 degrees, 45 degrees. And we can have this empty place like so. And this is where it gets a little bit more fun. We can press G, Shift Z, hold Control. We'll start snapping this empty around. And we can create these kind of corners like this super fast. Now, it will mirror your UVs, so keep that in mind. Um, it's just something that it will do, but it will actually bisect it and cut out a new shape here. It might need a little bit of manual cleanup, but for the most part, uh, this is a pretty efficient way to work as well. And if your textures just so happen to work out for you, then all the better, right? And so this is a big, big deal. And so you can do things like this, which is nice. Now you can also grab the empty and try other different angles if you needed to as well. So this is something you might want to do for like roof segments and things like that. And then all you would have to simply do is create some kind of mesh that covers up this seam going through the middle. Specifically for like roof tiles and things like that. But uh, it's kind of one of those tricks from 3D Studio Max uh, that most people don't know about in Blender but you can do these kind of things. So, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you learned quite a bit. And if you liked it, like and subscribe to the channel. Leave some comments below, something you might want to see in the future. Uh, and I'll definitely get around to it at some point. So thanks for watching and take care.